Black Ops 3 is widely considered to be the favorite game among the zombies community, and for good reason. Even then, there is still a good amount of achievements barely anyone has bothered to unlock, at least on Xbox. With that said, let's unlock the rarest one on every map. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. This will help me know what content you enjoy watching, and will help me reach my goal of getting monetized this year. Let's start at launch day in everyone's once hated, now universally beloved map, Shadows of Evil. The rarest achievement on Shadows is sorry, we're dead. You need to kill 10 zombies that are inside of a store, and only 0.51% of players have completed it. Basically, kill them before they get into the map to kill you. I spawn here in Morb City and get to work by knifing a couple of zombies, opening the door, and shocking and slapping various flaming objects as a squid. In retrospect, I probably didn't need to bother doing most of this, but nevertheless, it's always good to have the safety net of Quick Revive. It's like a Hollywood Nepo baby. You don't need actual talent when your parents are stars. I killed zombies for a couple of rounds, pausing to buy the L car at the start of round 3. I know it's not the most optimal strategy in most games, but honestly, my wife and I love to buy this thing just to be safe. The plan is to just hang out in this area until the zombies start spawning. I have to be quick though, because multiple zombies tearing down the boards can get into the map quickly and make this task longer than it has to be. It's crazy the complete 180 degree turn Shadows of Evil has done over the years. When it dropped, it was not a popular map at all, causing players to flock to the giant if they bought the season pass. You can only pick up one gate where at a time and the marg was spawned in more frequently i think as quick as every two rounds they even accidentally let you pack a punch the apothecan servant before they patched it out which pissed people off round five rolled around and everyone's favorite pokemon combi decided to come after me and shoot its butt juice now bug types aren't weak to steal of course but i squashed him all the same before gobbling up the max ammo of course i got another one immediately afterwards on round six because i guess the game really wants me to shoot people huh maybe my mom was right about video games after all I started to get a little nervous here because I still hadn't killed 10 zombies. If you're not familiar with Shadows of Evil, a Margo will spawn on round 8 if you haven't done any of the rituals, which you normally should have at least 2, probably 3 done by now. The space was also getting tight, so I decided that I could do with a little insurance. I made my way into Footlight, activated Juggernog, and a few other goodies, and juiced up to make sure I had some protection. I have a bit of a hairy situation by the Jug Machine because I didn't prioritize opening the stairs, but I'm Ron Perlman, so I can handle it. I decided that a gun with more oomph would kill zombies faster, so I picked up the trusty Cuda, made my way back to the center of the map, and ended the round. Round 7 is the last round before a Marg was spawned, so I had to stay nimble to keep these brain dead fools in their businesses. A couple more murdered citizens resulted in the first unlocked achievement of the video. I should be saying on to the giant, but the giant doesn't have any achievements, so uh, mission accomplished, good job. You know what they say, second the best, and that's never been more true here on the greatest zombies map of all time. Their Eisendrox rarest achievement is called none left standing with 0.41% completion. You need to kill one of each type of zombie with a death machine. The first couple rounds are pretty standard. I grab the fuse that I immediately forget about just like every other game, activate the landing pad, grab quick revive, and build up enough points to make my way to the first courtyard. After picking up the shield piece and activating the landing pad for the wonder sphere, I instinctively work on filling the first dragon head. I had to remind myself though that this wasn't actually something that I had to do, but I've done it so many times. I think Rick Toff and has climbed inside me and is working me like a puppet. I spun the gobble gum machine and got exactly what I wanted. Sword play. Though not a useful gum most of the time, I tend to use it here on Der Eisendrak to help save some points and fill up this first dragon. It's like a left-handed bullpen arm in baseball. I immediately negate my frugal nature by buying an SMG. After building up some points, I made my way into the castle and flipped the power switch, activated the landing pad, grabbed the shield part, and turned on the anti-gravity in the undercroft. I can't see shit, so I figure you can't see shit, so I turn up my brightness a bit and grab the final shield piece. I'm happy it was here because it's wonky to grab in the other two locations for some reason. I built the shield and put down a pack of rabid dogs. You can tell they have rabies because they're on fire, the number one symptom of rabies. Now all I need to do is wait until round 12 for the appearance of the Panzer Soldat. That Goliath tank is the key player in unlocking this achievement. His flamethrower and shocky things will create fire and electric zombies. I picked up Juggernog on round 6 because I like to not die, but depending on how this video does, <laughs> you never know. I I realize that while I'm waiting, why don't I just go ahead and finish feeding the dragons? The bows are my favorite thing about this map, and I have to wait until round 12 anyway. While thinking about which fictional archer I'm going to compare myself to later in the video, I got cornered on these computers and got cuddled to death by the zombies. I've always been an affectionate guy though, so I picked myself up and bought my perks again before grabbing the Kuda off the wall and almost getting killed again while filling up the Undercroft dragon. One clutch escape later, and I traded in the Vesper for the Wrath of the Ancients. I killed zombies and took some time 
I'm working on the wolf bow. I previously said that the void bow is my favorite wonder weapon of all time, and of course that hasn't changed, but I didn't want to double up on it in back-to-back -back Black Ops 3 videos. Also, the wolf bow will be the least likely to hit unintended targets and prolong the recording. That's Zetsubo and Oshima's job. But skipping ahead, I completed the wolf bow steps minus filling the chest, and it was time for the Panzer Soldat. Around the corner he came and he immediately started throwing his shock bombs at me. This resulted in some of the zombies being electrified, which is just what I need. Now, I had to maneuver myself so he would light my ass on fire while also lighting at least one zombie on fire. I actually made a major tactical blunder here and didn't equip Fatal Contraption to my gum loadout before starting, which would have spawned a death machine and made this much quicker. Instead, I opted for the parkour savvy way. If you step on this specific tile next to the hole you have to shoot for the wolf bow during low gravity, it'll spawn a death machine power up. Here's the thing though, I've never actually done this before, so my Ray Charles ass didn't know where to look. Eventually I ran out of anti-gravity and had to wait again. But hey, at least I finished my wolf bow. After thinning out the zombies, I activated another death machine, praying that I wouldn't have to wait another round, and thankfully you don't. Of course the anti-gravity turned off before I could get it, so screw me, right? I actually failed this one more time, but I was eventually able to float up to the tile, spawn another death machine, and this time my wall running wasn't complete shit. I grabbed the death machine and sprayed into the crowd, melting Mr. Freeze, and unlocked the achievement by killing his diverse group of friends. Oh wait, wait, wait a minute. Before I get charged for a hate crime on that last comment, let's go to Zetsubo no Shima. Web of Defeat requires you to remove spider webs in every way possible. It has a very low 0.07% completion, which makes sense because why would you even do this in a normal game? There's a bit of confusion online about what methods you have to use, but a recent post I found said you have to use your knife, a grenade, a bowie knife, the KT-4, the XM-53 rocket launcher, and the ray gun. While I'm getting started in the game, clearing my first web with a knife, I want to admit something. Prior to making this video, I've probably loaded up Zetsubo two times in my life, and I've had BO3 since 2015. This map has a phenomenal atmosphere, don't get me wrong, but man, you need to do a lot at one time. After waiting for Quick Revive to drop from the plane, I made my way out of spawn before returning to kill some zombies in the optimal taped glasses way by shooting them before knifing and planting a seed and grabbing a bucket. I'm sure some of you watching enjoy the whole seed mechanic, but I don't know. I'd rather play Stardew Valley if I'm farming. I opened my plant and get bonus points, which is amazing because only Elon Musk could afford all the doors on this map without help. I opened a couple of doors so I can go fill up my bucket with green water to turn on the generators because I thought it had to be from that puddle, but I guess that's what I get for not watching certain popular zombies YouTubers. I got sandwiched between a few zombies and took it down, forcing me to go back and grab Quick Revive, which sucks because every down cost me points that could have been used to open doors. I cleared my second web with a grenade before harvesting a couple of plants. Thankfully, I was blessed, if you can call it that with an XM-53 on my third plant. That's the only plant I had to deal with. Round 5 was my first visit from everyone's favorite special zombie, the Thrasher. I've seen a lot of people complain about the Thrasher, but I honestly don't think he's part of the problem with this map. After killing him and his friend, I turned on both power stations, got bodied by another Thrasher, fought Quick Revive yet again, lost my hearing underwater as well as my last Quick Revive, and turned on the actual power. Yeah, yeah, get your scaly issue comments ready because I'm out of revives on round 5. I accidentally stumbled onto the set of Into the Spider Verse 3, so I sucked some ass sweat out of one of the spiders. It turns out that the spiders are into butt stuff, so as a thank you, they webbed up the exit to the lab, and I cleared it as my third web with the XM-53. Zetsubo no Shima is what Redditors think about when you mention capitalism, so I spent some time saving up points in order to buy Juggernaug. The ICR-7 is one of my favorite guns in Black Ops 4, and it's no slouch here, even if the design is uglier. I kicked myself because I had the 3000 needed for the Bowie knife, but being enough quick revives, I wasn't going to risk running around without Jug. Another round of saving points resulted in me opening the door to the labs. I got my wetsuit on and got swimming through these tunnels while also picking up the pack-a-punch piece. At the end of this tunnel, I shot the zit for some air, picked up the plant I needed for the KT-4, and swam back. Wait, what the? Oh shit, I think I took a wrong turn in the caves back there. Shout out to Trent Nichols, a viewer who asked if I've ever thought of doing a Subnautica video. The cave diving was well worth it though, as I crafted the KT-4 and shot the fourth web. If you guessed that another section of points farming was up next, 
Congratulations, you win a signed aglet. I hit the gobble gum machine and picked up self-medication. That's right, I am not hitting the mystery box for the ray gun because I am tired of attempting this achievement. I bought the Bowie knife and cut the speed cola machine free as my fifth web, and then made my way across the map by the blue water, accepting some assault from zombies, blasted the webbed up double tap machine for the sixth and final web. I thought karma had reared its ugly head because I didn't get the notification, but after confirming that I did indeed unlock the achievement, I gave Zetsubu Nashima one final middle finger by dashboarding and saving my self-medication. On to Gorod Krovi and Zombie Pult with 0.11% completion. I've never been good at Gorod Krovi, but that's okay because all I need to do is launch 10 zombies at the same time. After dropping out of the devil's anus. I got to work. As always, buying quick revive, building up points, and failing to get sword flay from the gobble gum machine. On round three, I left spawn and purchased the trusty L car for some added protection as I continued to mow down zombies in the name of profit. After enough zombies, I was able to cross the bridge to the middle of the map, zip back to buy the CUDA, then bought one more barrier so I could flip on the power. Now it's only a matter of wrangling some zombies and getting them on this gate thing so I could launch them into the air. This plan was of course immediately screwed up by Skyrim coming over here and setting the area on fire, so I retreated into the power area. I took a stupid down because Gorod Krovi is dumb and not because of a skill issue. After some time and nearly getting killed again, I activated the trap but didn't have enough zombies to complete the achievement. Thankfully getting launched didn't kill me without Juggernaut because otherwise I would have just thrown in the towel and made low quality content, like reaction videos. Back to the power area we go, trying to train in this area before immediately taking another down. At this point I was so pissed so I said fuck quick revive, if I go down I go down. It's only been 10 minutes. Of course the trap wasn't ready yet because screw me I guess. After some slick parkour to get over the zombies, I rounded them up and activated the trap. This time my math was right and I unlocked the achievement, the fastest one of the video. Spending the least amount of time on Gorod Krovi will not get any complaints from me. On to revelations to close off the video with Keep Close. It's the rarest zombies achievement on the original BO3 maps, uh, if you can call revelations original, with a 0.06% completion rate. I needed to build the Keeper Protector and have him kill one of each time of enemy on the map. While I'm starting out and activating the first portal, I need to clarify something about this achievement. The wording is misleading, and there are a few guides that say you have to shoot the enemies first, but this is not true. Just like working on a group project in college, you don't have to assist anything. The Keeper Protector just has to kill them. After killing the dog things from Infinity War and most of the round two zombies, I made my way into everyone else's favorite map, Origins, pausing to pick up the first piece of the Dragon Shield, and more importantly, the first piece of the Keeper Protector. I buy the VMP, kill some zombies on the next round, and made my way down through Buried and Mob of the Dead. One of my favorite things about Revelation is the game playing music from each individual map as you enter their area for the first time. I do what I must and kill some more evil aliens before blasting my way over to Varuk. While everyone else salivates over Darius, I've always been a Varuk's kind of guy when it came to World at War. After stumbling in the dark, I found the skull of Nansapwe, another piece for the Keeper Protector. I needed to activate the Corruption Engine and get the shield piece in this part of the map. And much like me waiting for Taco Bell in real life, I can't buy it until my next paycheck. I had no choice but to shoot up the mentally ill to fund my triglyceride addiction before almost dying, grabbing the shield, blasting away from Varuk into Kino de Tote. You're probably asking why I didn't do the corruption engine in Varuk. My answer to that is, I don't know. I kill the PBs and pick up the ICR-1 for more firepower. I kill all but one zombie in Kino, who will likely come back in 20 years and kill me for revenge, then open to the door to the single greatest map of all time. I do the dance with the Apotheca. And they clearly didn't play just dance on the Wii, so I beat them at Cotton Eye Joe with no issues. I head into Nocturne Tote and pick up Juggernaut, because I'm still admittedly a noob at this map too. I pick up the Purple Crystal, which is the final piece of the Keeper Protector, activated Zero Gravity, and picked up the final piece of the Dragon Shield, which I crafted in Nocturne Tote. Years of playing Skyrim and its many releases have finally paid off. I headed back to Varok to be a mob, built my temporary BFF, and fired up the last Corruption Engine in order to trap this massive Bionicle. Worm. Now that he's caught in the death ray, it's time to make like DMX and party up. Rest in peace, DMX. My plan was to use the ICR and train in Kino for a while because the Keeper Protector started an OnlyFans and charges 5,000 points per activation. After getting over 9,000, I headed to Shangri-La through Der Eisendrock and brought stamina up because this map is bigger than my foot and double tap from Origins. I took it down in Der Eisendrock, waiting for the low gravity to get a free perk, a massive setback because now I had to waste 7,000 points 
points to get everything back that should have gone towards the Keeper Protector. Realizing that I needed 5,000 points on round 12 specifically, I chose to delay getting stamina up back before I ended the round. Right on schedule, the first Marg was spawned, so I slid into the Protector's DMs and ran for the Trapped Worm and Knock. After getting deep-throated and freeing the Pack-a-Punch, the Keeper Protector and I got to work. Let me tell you, this guy has a Type A personality, which is perfect because he complements my laziness. He blasted a regular zombie, a spider, a parasite, and the Margwa on round 12 before taking out a Fury on round 13 before piecing out. I can't blame him. He pulled his weight, and now he only had to kill two more types of zombies. I'm gonna skip ahead because that requires less editing and there's less that you have to sit of me just shooting zombies. So here we are in round 18 where a corrupted keeper spawned. I spawned my own keeper. Now, can we talk about how they're always doing my favorite color red dirty? Red is always evil. Blue is always good. It's bullshit. After that tangent, skipping ahead to round 21, the metal man himself shows up. I summon the keeper protector in Verruckt and deal with the zombies while Emperor Palpatine here zaps the Panzer Soldat to unlock Keep Close and end the video. Thanks so much for checking out this video. And if you want to see more achievements, I'll put a couple videos on screen now. If you want to see anything specific from me in a video, leave a comment and I'll consider anything as long as it doesn't involve Margwa tentacles.